Now, I understand that in places like Nigeria, iPhones are status symbols, right? A lot of people buy them not because they intend to use them for what they're built to do or they intend to use all the features, but because they want to feel like, oh, I use an iPhone now, I am better than Android phone users. Okay, so in today's video, I am basically going to be risking my life. I want to have a conversation that I know could have my head taken off in the comment section. So my hope is that you guys actually engage me objectively and you don't actually just straight up come for me. Because the aim of this video is not to start an argument, but ultimately to educate you on why I think iPhones are objectively better than Android phones. And in this video, I'm going to talk about everything as carefully as I can. So I urge you to actually watch the video to the end and understand, actually watch to understand, not to respond before you actually start clicking away at your keyboard and giving me a response. So let's get into it. So like the title of the video says, iPhones are objectively better than Android phones. And this comes down to a very simple fact, the operating system. Android phones have Android and iPhones have iOS. Now, iPhones are very few and far between because the only phones that can use iOS are phones that were created by Apple. But Android phones, on the other hand, are very many on the market and pretty much anyone and their grandma can make an Android phone. So let's actually get into the reasons why objectively an iPhone is always going to be better than an Android phone, no matter the price points we're comparing. And the first reason is the fact that Android is open source. Now, naturally, this should be a positive thing. It should be something that should be counting towards a point for Android, but that's not the case. And here's why. The fact that Android is open source and anyone on their grandma can make an Android phone ends up meaning that pretty much Android phones come in different shapes, sizes, and different price points. And when you're talking price points, you're talking extremely budget devices that pretty much anyone can buy so that they can have access to a smartphone. And ultimately that would water down the performance, the features, and the usability of the device. You can very easily see that in the quality of phones that companies like Umidigi and companies like Techno and Infinix are making just to be able to sell phones to you at prices around 50 to 100,000 while, I don't know, keeping it pocket friendly ultimately, but the experience with the phone would almost have you dead by the time you've had it for a few weeks. But for iOS, you have to actually buy from Apple, right? So they get to dictate the quality of their devices. If they don't want a device below a certain level, they just have to not make it. But that's not the case for Android and Google, for example, because other manufacturers from other countries can pretty much just manufacture whatever the hell they want. And as long as it's fine, then it's fine. But then after considering fact one, you could also argue that there are phones that Android manufacturers are making that are objectively better than iPhones because they have so many features and they are so better with build quality and their cameras can do this and they can zoom 2000% and all these things. A great example would be like the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultras and the S21 Ultras and the Note 20 Ultras of the world. These are amazing phones. Like I have used, seen, tested, taken photos with these phones. So I, I know that they are actually quite amazing. But there's one fundamental problem with them. See, for this part, I'm going to have to tell you a story. I have a friend. He decided that he was angry with iPhones and they weren't offering him a bang for his buck and value for his money. And he wanted to switch back to Android. And the first few days of getting his S whatever ultra, right? It was raving at me on Twitter about how he had to attend three meetings simultaneously on three different hubs, Discord and Zoom and Google Meets or something. And he could split his screen into three and have all three hubs actually use his microphone and his camera at the same time simultaneously. And he attended all three meetings and he could listen to everybody speaking all at the same time. First of all, I don't know why you'd want to do that because that would definitely give you a headache, but it was raving about how this feature was great and everything. But a few days after that, I'm not sure it was up to four days, he actually sold his Samsung phone and just went back to a 13 Pro Max. Why do you think that is? See, ultimately having all the latest features and being a more powerful device in court is not evidently going to impact your user experience. For example, if I wanted to attend three meetings at the same time and I did, like I needed to do it, right? I would have to use my iPhone on one and then I would have to use my iPad on one and maybe another laptop on the third one. 
and that would be completely fine for me. It's cumbersome, it's three more devices or it's two more devices that I don't need to have if I had a Samsung phone, but I'd much rather do that because then I could trust the quality that I'll be getting from every single call and I'll be able to interact with every single call without stress. But if you had a Samsung phone, you could just do it on your phone on the go while you're driving and you don't have any problems there. But it still went back to an iPhone. And the reason for that is, at the end of the day, the user experience. After a call, his phone started to hang. After a call, his phone started to hack up. After a call, his phone was running hot. After a call, there was just so many weird things going on with his phone that he realized that this is never going to happen with an iPhone. And ultimately, he decided to switch back. And there's one more thing that a lot of people have been talking about lately, and that is the ecosystem. They talk about the fact that you know, Google is building an ecosystem now with the Pixel and the Pixel Watch and the Pixel Tab and Chrome OS. And I'm like, no, that's not the same thing. Okay, so Samsung has a fairly decent ecosystem already with the Gear Watch, Gear OS Watch. I don't know what that thing is called, but it's actually really nice. Compared to my Apple Watch, I think it actually has a lot more features, which is actually really cool to see. It interacts with your phone a lot better in some instances than there are certain things that the Gear OS Watch or Samsung Watch can do that an Apple Watch can do. But at the same time, there are certain things that Apple Watch can do that, that the Gear OS Watch just simply wouldn't do. And this is always the case with Android and iOS, right? There's always going to be ups and downs and positives and negatives for each operating system. Now, why do you think people who are hungry for an ecosystem always go rush into the Apple iPads and the iPhones and the MacBooks and so on? It's essentially the synergy. You see, Android did something recently where they introduced something called a uh, nearby share. This is something that was supposed to take on the experience when you're using AirDrop. And for the most part, it worked. I actually bought a Pixel phone and went back to Android for a little bit to actually test that out and see how well I was going to be able to use it. And I ran right back. Ultimately, it works, but it doesn't work the same. There's also iMessage, right? There's the fact that when you send a message, you don't have to spend the money sending a text message to people. And I understand that Android is working on their own whatever, or maybe they've finished working on it, but it just simply doesn't work as reliably as iMessage and iPhones and iOS just works with this. The synergy that has been created over many years of being a closed operating system has really helped Apple to tune and dial down on all their features and make it work exactly the way that they want to. Unfortunately, we cannot say the same things for Android phones. They are still playing catch up in this regard. And another thing that we should talk about is social media use. Now, I've seen pictures taken from a Samsung Galaxy S22, and I have seen pictures taken from an iPhone 13 Pro Max, and they both look great, right? If you posted them, everyone would like them on social media and you have no problems with them. But then if you zoom into the Samsung picture, it's like sharper still than the iPhone one. And that's probably because of the iMegapixel count and all this extra things that the Samsung camera can do that the iPhone camera cannot, right? That's as far as photo goes. But the issue here now becomes when you actually upload these photos, they don't look the same anymore. Have you ever tried Snapchat on an Android phone? It's an atrocity, it looks horrible. But let's not even talk about photos now, let's actually talk about videos. Have you seen a video out of an iPhone and have you compared it to the highest end Samsung phone? It just doesn't look the same. I mean, there are phones out there that make fantastic video like the new Sony Xperia 1 IV, which is actually built for video making and video makers and pro creators, but you're not going to buy that phone. I'm not going to buy that phone because it's like $1,700 or $1,800. And that's not just, it's not something that's feasible for the average person. Nobody is spending $2,000 on a phone. Plus the fact that it's still an Android operating system phone, it's just really not going to be your first choice when you're looking for a phone. And that's a fact. For the longest time, I was an Android fanboy. I mean, I used Android phones only and I absolutely hated iPhones. And the reasons why I hated iPhones, I could list them out. I could say this thing was wrong with the iPhone and this thing was wrong with the iPhone and this other thing was bad about the iPhone. But over the years, they've actually fixed these things. Like I tried an iPhone for a brief period in 2020 and I have not looked back. Mostly because 
it just fixed everything that I complained about previously and it's just been fantastic for me ultimately. I think most of the hate that iPhones and iOS users generally get is mostly from a place of ignorance. Now, I understand that in places like Nigeria, iPhones are status symbols, right? A lot of people buy them not because they intend to use them for what they're built to do or they intend to use all the features, but because they want to feel like, oh, I use an iPhone now, I am better than Android phone users. Now, while that's like really, really stupid, I also understand the allure that comes with this. But at the same time, it's not reason enough for you to hate everyone who uses an iPhone because they choose to use an iPhone. First off, not everybody's that ignorant. Some people are actually educated and they actually use their phones because this is what is best for them. And obviously, there's always going to be the people who do things for the wrong reasons. There's absolutely no reason to then hate an entire set of people or a subset of people just because of that fact, there's always going to be good and bad people and there's always going to be stupid people. There's nothing anyone can do about that. At the end of the day, I like iPhones and I like Android phones and I'm not somebody who's ever going to be a brand loyalist of any kind. I mean, currently I do use iPhones because they're convenient for me. I like the fact that I have my MacBook and my iPhone and my iPad interacting like no man's business. I like the fact that I can take a photo on my phone right now and when I get to my computer, it's already in my photos app. I like iCloud. I just, I like it. And I cannot think of a system on Android that works the exact same way. I mean, I've tried to use Android computers before they don't work the same. I've tried to use Chromebooks and while they may interact with my Google phone a little better, they essentially are lesser than a MacBook, significantly lesser than. So I'm not going to compromise on my user experience and the work that I have to do just because I'm trying to fit into a box or use an ecosystem that's really not ecosystem in at the moment. So at the end of the day, to each his own. For the very longest time, I was a BlackBerry user. I still swore by BlackBerry phones. I don't currently use them now, but I mean, at least when I was using BlackBerry, I could say this is what the BlackBerry is doing for me that Android and iOS phones can't ultimately give me by themselves. I have security and I am never going to see an ad on Instagram or on Facebook or on Twitter. Hads will simply never come my way because my phone is that secure and nobody has my personal information. I cannot say that for Android and the Android ecosystem. I cannot say that for the iOS and the iOS ecosystem. And at least that did something for me. But objectively, I cannot find a single thing that I feel like the Android phones do significantly better than the iOS phones for me to actually choose them. It's just inconvenient in myself, ultimately, if I decide to use an Android phone. And for me, in my use case, this is why I feel objectively iPhones are ultimately better than Android phones. And if you don't agree, you can tell me why. That is, if you've actually watched this video to the end and you understood everything that I said, Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I know this is going to ruffle a lot of feathers and I guess I will see you on another video that was shot by Kagan. Peace. Ah, ah. Ah, ah.